Start with an invocation by Jeff Gilbert. Thank you, Elizabeth. Dear Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the ability to gather here tonight to do the city's business. May what we do here tonight be pleasing in your sight. In your name we pray. Amen. Um, looking, we have a meeting from July 9th, the approval of minutes. Uh, looking over those, having them in the mail. Does anybody see any changes we need to make? And hearing none, does anybody like to make a motion? Make a motion to approve the minutes. I'll second that motion. All right. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. <coughs> Jeff, any uh, addenda to the agenda? Uh, no, sir. Nothing else to add tonight. All right. Moving along to the public hearings, we have two, RZ1905 and SD1901. Uh, we will start with RZ1905. Correct. And both agenda items tonight deal with the same property. Uh, the first portion that we'll talk about uh, is a request for rezone the property from light industrial to R5. And then the second part deals with the actual plat itself for the subdivision. And um, that approval would be pending, of course, any... Um, it would be pending the you know successful completion of the rezoning to R5. So, uh, with that, um, the applicant is seeking to rezone the northeast corner of the intersection of Glenwood and Bleckley from LI Light Industrial to R5 single family. Now, the applicant is seeking to construct a 62 unit single family subdivision on the property. Uh, in terms of existing zoning, again, the property is on Light Industrial. Now, the surrounding properties, you have the cement plant here with heavy industrial, the church's neighborhood commercial. Uh, you have an ongoing subdivision across the street that is zoned planned development district. And then the bulk of the neighborhood is zoned R10 single family. Uh, the light industrial district allows a variety of commercial, industrial, and warehouse and storage uses on the property. Uh, essentially does not allow any residential. Uh, the R5 single-family district would allow single-family dwellings on lots of at least 5,000 square feet. Uh, in terms of existing land use, uh, the property is currently undeveloped and has been used in the past as a storage area for a well drilling company. Surrounding uses include single-family residential, a concrete company, and a church. And in terms of future land use, uh, the future land use map for this area shows it being industrial. Uh, this would be consistent with both the light industrial and heavy industrial classifications. Um, looking at the plat, uh, staff did have a few concerns uh, related to the property. Uh, among these are site contamination, parking, and landscaping. Uh, due to the manufacturing industrial uses on the property in the past, um, there has been some contamination of the site. Um, in our staff report, we talk about we would like to see an uh, assessment of the site prior to final approval of any rezoning. Uh, we actually have received a letter from the EPA uh, that detailed the pollution on the site and the cleanup and the fact that it has been cleaned up. And uh, the EPA, EPA's consideration, the site is a clean site. Uh, there was lead and arsenic um, contamination of the property, but it's been dug out, hauled off, and backfilled. Um, and so they're fine with the site as it is. Um, another concern that we had deals with parking. Uh, the city zoning ordinance requires a minimum of two off-street parking spaces for a single family dwelling. Uh, what we have found um, that the smaller lots that you're seeing today um, have at times resulted in excessive on-street parking uh, because you have smaller houses, people are using their garages as storage instead of parking. Uh, we we count the garage spaces towards that two off-street parking space requirement. Um, but what we have what we've seen is several is that the basically the garage is full. Um, there people are parking in the in the driveway, but there's not enough room, so people are either parking on the tree or parking on the grass. And so um, it is not something that I can really deal with in a regulatory fashion. But we would just like the developer to be aware of those concerns and try to take that into consideration when they're doing their driveways and siting the house on the property. Um, and finally, um, any new development on this scale in an established neighborhood will have an impact on its neighbors. Uh, one way to minimize this impact is, impact is to provide an attractive landscaping and buffering plan. Uh, we would like to see a landscaping plan for the project prior to final approval of any rezoning by the city council. 
Um, again, in a regulatory sense, I can't require them to do landscaping. Um, single family next to single family uh, does not require any landscaping per our standard zoning code. Uh, but again, we would like the developer to take that into consideration. Um, they have submitted a landscaping plan, which I'll, I'll let them talk about, um, and so they can address that from their end. Um, in terms of recommendations, um, this property is one of the few remaining large undeveloped tracts of land in the city. Uh, the proposal is a down zoning from industrial to single family residential. Uh, proposed projects and lot sizes are consistent with the development under construction across the street. Uh, staff does recommend conditional approval of the request, uh, pending information regarding the concerns above, and really the condition for the approval would be um, the approval of the rezoning to R5. So, um, with that, I'm happy to answer any questions you have for staff, and the applicant is present, and we have several members of the neighborhood who would like to speak as well. Okay. Um, as far as uh, from staff, what you say about asking the developer if you'd like to see landscaping. There's nothing, once we rezone it, there's nothing that says he has to do these things, correct? That's correct. Okay. Uh, in South Carolina, you cannot do contract zoning where you have a condition of approval for one of our standard categories. So, um, you know, you have to trust the developer to do what they say they're going to do. So. Okay. And you feel comfortable with the, um, where you say conditional approval or request pending information regarding the concerns above, you feel like your concerns have been answered? Yes, we would. I mean, at some point we'll get some more information about where they're going to site houses on the lot in terms of the parking aspect of that. But certainly on the landscaping, they provided us information on that. And on the contamination issues on the site, I'm comfortable with that as well. Any other questions for staff? Yeah, that's a good. I was going to ask you about your. Um, you got a clean site letter from the EPA. We do. Is there any other regulatory body that, that overlooks this kind of thing, or is that is it? EPA? Um, not that I'm aware of. Uh, DHEC would be the only one, but EPA would be above and beyond them. So, um, and you know, from my mind, if EPA is private, then that would you know sort of supersede DHEC control. There is ultimately a problem 20 years down the road who's going to be responsible. Uh, EPA has given it a clean bill of health. They, the letter talks about how they tested the soil, they dug it out the soil that was contaminated, they um, hauled it off to uh, an appropriate landfill, and they backfilled with clean dirt. And, um, their testing shows that it is a clean site. So, so per Steve's question, would it go to the property owner at that time? I would assume so at that point, if something cropped up further down the line, right? Unless there's some other agreement in place. That, but there's none that I'm aware of. Okay. Any other questions for staff? How long has the site been used, or is it not being used at all right now? Uh, it just has tree cover on it now. How long has it been since it's been used for anything? The, the last thing I remember was a long time ago. Um, Probably 15 years ago when it had, I think, used well drilling had some equipment stored on it. But, yeah, so I think it'd be, been longer than that for any kind of active use on it. So, And the way it is zoned currently, it could be industrial. Right. It could be many warehouses. It could be some sort of industrial type use. Yes. Okay. Here are no other questions for staff. Um, we will move along to the, the public um, public statements. And we the way this works is we have a 10-minute um, presentation by the applicant. And then from there, we have 15 minutes for uh, those that want to speak from the community and then a five-minute rebuttal from the applicant. Um, so is the applicant present and ready to speak? OK. Um, and then I'll just remind everybody to come to the microphone, state your name, address, for the record. Please. Yes. And then again, this is for the rezoning part of it as well. It's strictly the rezoning. Well, I mean, we can get into whichever you like, but there's, there'll be separate posts down the line. Okay. And I have a separate staff report for the flat portion. Okay. Good afternoon. Uh, I'm Bob Barreto, and I'm from Greenville, 100 South Hudson Street, uh, apartment A1, or unit A1. 
Um, I represent Falcon uh, Real Estate Development. We do real estate development throughout the upstate. Uh, we've done some in Greenville County. Uh, we do a lot of work in Greenville and Spartanburg. And um, I have brought some documents to show you what uh, what we plan on doing in terms of a, a buffer. Uh, and just use this here. Yes. These uh, are tough to see on here, but you'll get the idea. We're planning on creating a plant buffer around the uh, where it runs into the other other residential sections. There, is that one small? Yeah, that's great. Uh, that's great. And um, those will mature into groups that look like this. This is what we use for sound buffering and for, there you go, thank you. Sound buffering and any light pollution or just general activity. Bob, what's normally the, uh, how tall are you planning and, and what's it take to get to the maturity? Um, we will probably, I would think that it'll take a year or two to get to a maturity, um, which would be, we'll, we'll do the buffering or plant the buffering uh, immediately, probably b even before we start any construction or before our, our builder starts any construction on any homes. Does anyone have any other questions for the app? What kind of houses are going to go on these sites? We are going to build uh, houses that will probably sell in the start in the 170 to 180 range. Uh, now it won't be us building; it'll be Dan Ryan Homes. Uh, they're the builder. And they supplied me with some examples of what they would be building in there. And they are craftsman type cottages with two car garages. They have different uh, various applications for each of the, uh, the models that they're going to build. They build these in various parts of the state right now. Um, and then there are two more. If you'd like to see those. Square footages range from 12 to 1,600 square feet. What we were, what we're striving for is affordability. Hmm. What did you say that it, they were going to range from? I did. I, what probably about 180 to whatever people add in terms of of options and and the like. If 
if anybody would like these. Now, Bob, going back to the, the okay. buffer. Yes. On that, the side that's closest to the R10, uh, where your hand, where Jeff's hand just was. Um, yes. What all, you don't see as much right there. What, what are you thinking right there? Is it going to be that line? We will, there will be something there. Okay. And we'll probably put up a six foot privacy fence. Okay. As well. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. All right. Thank you, Bob. Okay. Thank you. Well, again, as Jeff stated, uh, if, if we have any um, op opponents to the application, if they would like to come up, state your name. Uh, you do have a 15-minute rebuttal period. And then um, we ask that you don't state the same thing over and over again. If there's something new, uh, please have it stated. Um, and if you would, just come forward and state your name for the record. And Jeff, or since Jeff, since Bob kind of went into both of them, are we allowed to talk about both of them at this point? Or okay, then we, we can. All right. So if you have either a question about the flat or the rezoning, I'll start. Okay. Uh, my name is Tom Thompson. I own two properties on West Wind Drive, 211A and 214 West Wind, and um, I guess. Uh, my question concern is with water flow. I understand there's a creek on this property, and I'd like to understand uh, exactly what happens to water flow and where this creek is. And um, I also like to understand there's power lines that run along back there. Is anything going to happen with those with those power lines? Okay. Can Wesley might be able to help with some of this. Uh, but the creek is generally kind of back, drainage ditch creek, kind of back in this area here. That's why it doesn't go any further back into the property. Mm -hmm. um, and so you can go ahead with more detail on And then potentially we'll be back in this area somewhere as well. So uh, Wesley White is the engineer for this, this site work for the property uh, with Ridgewater Engineering. Uh, Jeff's correct. The um, back buffer back there also uh, maintains the sewer line, which is going through there that the city maintains and owns. Uh, and then on this side of it, the, um, where the trees are, there's also the creek is uh, right adjacent to there. So um, in reality, um, I know this is where the landscape architect has shown the trees. The trees will actually back up closer to the um, actual lots themselves in this area. Um, a lot of this area down in here uh, will be an actual natural buffer that's required to be maintained um, by DHEC and, and the city. Uh, so that's a state regulation that we're required to maintain a certain buffer off there anyway. So a lot of those larger trees that are down in there are going to remain. Um, and then our sewer, uh, the storm drain, our storm water will all be contained in the pond over here. Um, there's an existing DOT catch basin that we'll drain into um, and uh, to handle and address storm water runoff uh, for the site. Um, there's also existing this property used to have part of Bleckley um, going through it. Um, so there's an old uh, sewer main and water main that are still active that will have to be relocated to the um, side of the road as well. Um, to, um, what about the question for about the electrical um, power lines? Um, anything that uh, uh, can't build up under any of them. Um, so those will be dealt with with uh, Duke, um, and we'll have to deal with their right away um, and to figure out if it's a transmission main or not. Okay. So what happens to all the water that runs those west wind blocks there? All that water runs to the very back. Where is that going to go now? It so will, right? yeah, we'll, we'll have to, we'll be required to catch it. Um, there's actually two pipes. Uh, you can't see them on here, but there's one about right in here and another one uh, right in here. And we'll uh, most likely catch those on our site. Catch. And the over is so water backing up into 
Just That's correct. We're required to maintain what uh, our uh, and so yeah, we'll we'll uh, it'll either go into our system or through our system um, or around it. Thank you. I was just going to ask you because it's here, it is for you. There is a a drain. There was a. You're. I've, I've been here so many times. I think. <laughs> My name is Eleanor Ray Lowing, and I live at 1000 Linder Avenue, okay. which is two houses below, up, up above that used to be a cow pasture. So that's where this is going. Okay. Um, there was a creek there we used to play in that it runs behind my property and <laughs> other people on my side of the street. Uh, and is this the creek that you're talking about? There's, all, there's now a, some kind of pipe that runs through there. And yeah, the reason I'm right asking here. is because I now have a sinkhole where it's going down to, the, to that, evidently that pipe or that creek. And we've asked about it, and we've been told that there's nothing the city can do about that. So um, if they can't do it for us, how are you going to do it for this property? Because it's going to run right through this development. Yeah, I'm not, where's yours is up here? Mm -hmm. I'm, on, I'm on the corner of Glenwood and Snipe. Okay. Yeah, I'm not familiar with that. So the, I'm imagining that there's, that there's a pipe that's here that's coming onto our property. Um, that we, we were only allowed to handle it on, on our property. Um, by hand, I mean we would put in a pipe system um, to convey it around our houses. But, you know, um, now, as far as the whether what we'd have to, the, what you're talking about, thinking all the stuff. I blew up out of six of the our first house. Okay. Is this my, still my time? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. You've answered a lot of my questions, and uh, but just a couple of more. I was talking with a gentleman when we came in, and my question is about, I know that the entrance and exit is going to be also on Glenwood, and it's going to be directly across from the entrance exit of the other housing development. <laughs> and according to what I heard, that's going to be 1,400 cars that's going to be coming in and out of those two it exits and entrances in addition to what's already going up Glenwood Avenue. So I'd like to know what's going to be done uh, man-wise or to the streets or whatever to control that traffic flow because it, we have gone now to almost round-the-clock traffic flow and it's, there's no speed limit evidently even though there's a sign posted. Um, also on, Glen, on Snipe Street um, we need some type of traffic control on that because of these people coming in. We have children playing and it's a cut through street and it's also a, a speed zone. So that is a, a, an issue with us. The buffer that you talked about putting in, how high is this buffer going to be between um, the current residents on the Glenwood night side and that? And how tall is that? In somebody's lifetime. <laughs> okay. Um, and where in Greenville, I know you said in Simpsonville, are there any housing developments that you have over there that we could ride by and look at these? I got it. Mm -hmm. And on the other two, are there are there any issues, any things in place to address the width of that road or turn lanes or how that will affect our property by adding this traffic or the width of which road? Glenwood Avenue. Glenwood Avenue. Mm -hmm. That is a separate question, or not for the planning commission. Uh, I mean, a DOT issue, and so when they. Uh, apply for encroachment permits through DOT to put in their road system. DOT will address whatever their requirements are for that at that point. So, which is too early in the process. Okay. Yes. Right now. Thank you. And who will maintain your uh, landscaping? 
Thank you. All right, Ms. Helen. Uh, as far as the traffic, um, again, that would be more on the city police side and things like that, but it, it's a, a very good um, comment to have. But on the planning commission side, what we're looking at only is whether to rezone it um, from industrial to uh, RM5, five, five, uh, and, and also to uh, look at the initial plat. So. Any other questions for the? Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry. I have one more regarding the question that somebody had about the parking situation. Yes, please come forward. Thank you. I'm sorry. The parking situation in these developments. Mm -hmm. um, I know that we are currently having a lot of parking along the streets in that one, and so we're probably going to even with the car with the garages, we're probably going to have that again. Who addresses these parking issues? Will the city of Anderson address those? And that is a good question, and we're actually uh, bring it. Jeff kind of alluded to it at the trial. Uh, we have minimum requirements for parking, and basically what it says is that every single family house has to provide a minimum of two off-street parking spaces. And so, as long as they're providing that, then that's all we can do from a regulatory stance. Um, you know, there are things that they can do. Uh, push the houses a little bit further back, do kind of a double width driveway so you can get a little more on there. But all I can require of them is two off-street parking spaces, which uh, could be driveway, could be in a garage. Um, we count the garage spaces as two off-street parking if it's a double garage, um, even if down the road people aren't actually using it to park in. And so as of this point in time, that's, that's the standard that we are required to follow. Uh, basically, you know, I have a pickup truck. It's about 20 feet long, and so um, you know, I would say, you know, if you have a 40-foot single driveway, that would be two parking spaces. But again, if you have a 10-foot driveway and a two-car garage, then to me, that's you know, you, you're meeting the requirement for your two off-street parking spaces. So. Currently, as the the zoning states in the R5, there's nothing that says. It, you have to put your car in the garage. <laughs> as long as you have a two-car garage, that meets the minimum standard. Um, and and we've kind of come up with staff saying we might need to reevaluate that. <laughs> in other words, the city can't force the resident to park in their garage. <laughs> yeah. So. In a way, but you know, we can't. Uh, the problem with the smaller size houses is that you know, you, oftentimes, you know, what you end up seeing is. I've got all my storage in my garage, you know, because I don't have enough space in the house because I've downsized or, you know, modern houses may not have as much storage area as older houses had. And so, um, you know, I think at a minimum what you're going to see, you know, you have a 15 foot front yard setback. And so, you know, you should see a driveway of at least that length plus the garage space. It looks like they all have two car garage. And so, uh, basically, you're looking at, you know, potentially, you know, theoretically three off street parking spaces at that point. So, yes, Bob. We, we can also Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Yes. I got a question for you. What is this um, PDD across the street? What is what's in there? So that's Village of Glenwood. Uh, that is a long, convoluted history. Um, there are several different things over time. Uh, essentially, at this point, um, different road layout, but the it's, it's essentially R5 single family as well. Um, basically, um, it's 80 houses or 82 houses. Uh, the average lot size in there is just a hair over 6,000 square feet. Um, our math on this is this is like 5,997 square feet. So practically identical in terms of average lot size is what you have across the street. Um, minimum here is 5,000 because it's standard. You know, have some are a little bit bigger, kind of in the corners, but um, average is just a hair under 6,000 square feet and matching the average across the street. And this existing neighborhood like Westwood, West Wind and Glenwood, 
that that's R10. Is that is that an older established neighborhood? I guess. That is an older established neighborhood. Um, so R10, of course, means minimum 10,000 square foot lot. So this this is more dense on a lot size. Um, you know, and but they're not using a portion of the property as well. So um, you know, it, it's probably not as if you could utilize all the property it wouldn't be greatly more dense than the surrounding neighborhood i don't think but with the creek and everything back there there's a big chunk that they can't really build on so well let's move back um to the actual uh boat in and of itself with the rz1905 for the um rezoning from light industrial to R5 single family. Does anyone have any questions for uh, Bob or staff at this point? All right, hearing none, would, would anyone like to make a motion for? I'll make a motion we approve it. All right, All right hearing a motion and approval. Uh, for those wanting to approve RZ1905, can I hear an aye? Aye. 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 We need a second, please. A second. Oh, uh, Andy had the second. second. Yes. Thank you. Uh, all in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Uh, let's have it on RZ1905. That is a recommendation of approval that will go to City Council on Monday night at 6 o'clock in this. Um, same room. For all right. So moving forward to the SD1901, which we've kind of <laughs> gone back and forth on both. This is the preliminary, preliminary plat approval. Uh, so our staff will go through the introduction, analysis, and everything on that. Correct. Um, again, the applicant is requesting approval of a preliminary subdivision plat for a single-family residential subdivision to be called Fireside. The subdivision is located at the northeast corner of the intersection of Glenwood and Bleckley and contains 62 lots on approximately 16.82 acres of land. Uh, again, the applicant is requesting the property be rezoned to R5. Proposed development would be subject to the R5 single-family guidelines plus any other relevant city codes. Now, the proposal calls for the following. 62 lots. Uh, the minimum lot size is 5,000 square feet. Average lot size is 5,909. Uh, the largest lot is 9,601. Again, you've got a minimum lot width of 50 feet, minimum lot depth of, the, of 100 feet, uh, front yard setback of 15 feet, rear yard 10, and side yard 6. Um, we have a number of items that we look at in terms of the preliminary plat. Um, our various departments have reviewed this plat. Um, the plat does meet the R5 single-family guidelines for lot area, lot width, and lot depth. And again, the smallest lot is 5,000 square feet, and the average is 5,909. Uh, we are recommending conditional approval of the plat. Uh, the plat should be redrawn to uh, include the following revisions and resubmitted to the city staff for review. So that would just be back to staff and not have to come back before the, this board. Um, the items that we have are that all structures must be located within 500 feet of fire hydrant. Uh, the final plat should show lots with setback lines included. Um, as they're aware of already, there is a sewer line running through the site that will need to be uh, rerouted as part of the design process. And uh, finally, the final plat should show drainage easements alongside and rear property lines. Um, with that, we would recommend again conditional approval pending those changes being made to the plat. All right. Does anyone have any further questions for staff? Uh, uh, as far as the plat approval. Uh -huh. I just have one more. Well, if, I'm gonna assume that they're gonna do what you, the condition, assuming we approve it and, and the conditions are put, what happens if they don't do the conditions? That we so the next step in the process is they'll, they'll do more detailed engineering work and they'll have to submit a final plat to the city staff for approval. Uh, these conditions, if they don't do these things, the staff will not approve it. And then they won't be able to record a plat and sell lots. So we, we, I mean, we have control on that moving forward from the staff level. So, because uh, we have to sign off on it, you know, depending on how they plan on doing things, they may have to do a bond, you know, for future improvements, like the remainder of the road, if they don't do it all at once, um, those types of things. So we do have control over that um, by controlling whether or not they can record it. All 
right. Any other further questions for staff? Uh, well, Bob, do you have anything to add to this? I, th I think we've kind of gone through and um, Wesley's answered questions on some of those questions on the the rerouting uh, of those as well. Uh, hearing that, is there any more from the community with what you would like to say or? Uh, <laughs> all right, hearing none. Uh, would we like to uh, hear a motion on SD 1901? Let's make a motion for conditional approval based upon the condition that put paid for. Okay. Second that motion. All right, motion is uh, uh, conditional approval upon uh, staff's recommendations. For all those in favor, say aye. Uh, aye. Any opposed? Hearing none, this will go, both will go in front of the city council. Just the rezoning. Uh, the plan is be finished out at the staff level, but the rezoning will go Monday night uh, at 6 o'clock in the same room. Yes, sir. All right. Well, getting back uh, and seeing that there's no addenda to the agenda, uh, we will consider ourselves adjourned. Thank you.